Bienvenido a Barcelona. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Circuit de Catalunya for the final day of action of the Blancpain GT Series Endurance Cup for 2019. Qualifying just about to get underway for our 45 cars on this bumper entry list for the season finale. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me, I'm delighted to have not John Morgan, but John Watson, the voice of the Blancpain Endurance Series. And down in the pit lane, we'll be joined as well by Louise Beckett. John, a nice, cool start to the morning uh, after the soaring temperatures of yesterday's free qualifying, uh, free practice for qualifying. So. Again, very different track conditions from those that the, the cars experienced the last time they were out here. Well, they will be different. I mean, effectively, track temperatures under half what it was, what, middle of the afternoon, 3 p.m., 4 p.m., here at the Circuit de Catalunya. And, of course, for qualifying, it's all about, and if it ever was important, it's going to be important here in Barcelona because the car we're looking at, the number four black Falcon Mercedes, is one of those cars that could walk away from here as the overall Blancpain GT Series driver's champion, also overall Blancpain GT Series team champion, and possibly overall endurance drivers, overall champion. I can hardly get it all out in one breath. <laughs> and here's the car that they are battling, the 563 Lamborghini Trio. Now, the Black Falcon and the Lamborghini Trio in Budapest a couple of weeks ago ended up tied on points for the World Challenge Europe title effectively the Blancpain Sprint Series here in Europe. And it went on a tie-break to the Lamborghini Trio because they had won more races than the Mercedes Trio. Now, the deal here, were they to be tied, again, it would have to come down to a tie-break. But at the moment, in the number four Black Falcon Mercedes, Mario Engel and Lucas Stoltz are two points ahead of Andrea Caldarelli and Marco Mapelli. Now, those are the duos, or the two drivers, in the three driver lineups, in the number four and the 563, who are in the hunt. And it is a two-point margin. It basically, it's a dead heat, and we've got qualifying and the race to decide the title. Well, if we look at what happened yesterday afternoon, in that second session, that uh, pre-qualifying session, we had the number four Mercedes was ended up fourth quickest. We had the 563 Lamborghini, Calderelli, Mapelli, and Costa ended up seventh quickest. Not necessarily a true reflection of where they will be after qualifying because everybody will be running the freshest of the tyres and, in most cases, new tyres. And because grid position is everything here at Barcelona, both teams will be doing the most they can. You just saw the 72 Ferrari of Miguel Molina, Davide Rigon, and Michaela Lucien. Now they have a massive margin here in the endurance cup purely these five endurance races this is the final one of those over oh hey look it's the number four black falcon mercedes maro engel lucas stoltz and yelma berman and dennis linda marco mapelli and andrea caldarelli are a further two points behind them so again if that comes down to a tie break first of all it'll have to result in some major drama for the 72 Ferrari, but this is motor racing, major dramas happen all the time. Again, that could come down to a tie break. The odds are in favor of the 72 car very much, but John, you know, they've had an up and down season. Everything's a roller coaster ride in GT racing, so they know that absolutely nothing can be taken for granted. Well, I, but for me, the exciting thing about having these three teams and three different manufacturers battling for this overall title is they've all got stellar driver lineups. Yeah. So again, for me, the high point maybe of today will be what we're about to see unfold in front of us. That's the qualification. Three different drivers, three sessions amalgamating the times together. In the case of some of the teams where there are two car drive, a two driver per car, such as you can see just in the foreground on that shot, the, the Parker Racing Bentley, they will just do the second and third sessions. There is the Parker Bentley. As I said, it's about to make right <laughs> out the Bentley. <laughs> Do you know Got what? That one right again. I'm glad they're not just making a liar out of me. <laughs> okay, well, the, the cars that have got a two driver lineup show them as driver one and driver three, with driver two being absent. So I'm assuming they go out in the first and the last part. That would but be, again, yep. You know, just as just as I say that, guaranteed, that's not. So they, they, they will only do two okay. sessions. Yes, they'll um, only do, they'll only be allowed out twice. There is a, the most impressive lineup of Lamborghinis. We don't have the 63 Grasso Racing Lamborghini here this weekend. We have a Grasso Racing car but that's running, I believe, in the Silver Cup. Yeah, the the uh, 63 car that's in the ADAC 
uh, Masters, which is also concurrent. Here's the 77 Re uh, repaired. Repaired, yes. Uh, the AM class winning car. Adrian Amstutz had a clatter with the 107 Bentley yesterday that basically cost them both about an hour of running time in pre qualifying the second practice session yesterday. Black Falcon, there is the blue number four car. That's the one we're going to be looking at in terms of, well, potentially a win, but also potentially uh, title wins here. The number six car, another strong driver lineup. And that is one of the delights of this GT series, whether you're looking at the short sprint races or the long endurance races, it is jam packed with quality machinery and quality drivers. Uh, I, well, I was just going to say, I wonder, are a number of the teams going to hold back We've got a 15-minute session. In essence, you've got on a brand new set of rubber, all the, the very best of the rubber available, and it will be, in theory, your first flying lap. That will be the lap that will give you the best lap time. You might eke out a second lap, just depending on track temperature. Track temperature will be so just, just under 20 Celsius at present. So everybody more or less is filtering up, and how will you find clear track to get that one yeah. lap in? As I mentioned yesterday in our broadcast, well, there are drivers who manage to do it consistently. There's others wouldn't more, more chance of being struck by lightning than finding a clear <laughs> lap, and, to be frank about it. But oh, anyway, that's harsh. the nature of motorsport. Just saw Amadel Harfi, there's the Oman Racing TF Sport Aston Martin. Again, another title race leading car. But and that's... That, there you can see the difficulty. Everybody running more or less nose to tail. Yeah. 45 cars around the racetrack, you did the maths yesterday, you worked out that's approximately, if everybody on track, it would be about 100 metres between yeah. cars. And you can see in that 20 metres, there's three cars jammed in, so it, it, that, it never works out, does it? Cars have magnets, they're all attracted to each other. So now Sally Yonick on his warm-up lap, trying to find a way through. He does, and behind him goes the, the Honda. Honda as yeah. well. So trying to find a little gap, they go by one of the many Lamborghinis. And everybody desperate to find. Now, see Sally Yonick, he's got a decent bit of road in front of him, so that's worked very nicely for him. Getting by there, or getting by the Lexus there, really important because now, now there's a gap he can really play himself into. And you can see the Honda just backing up a little bit as well. You really have to know, it's not just about leaning the car on the door handles, you have to create the gap somehow. Well, you might clear or create the gap on one part of the circuit, but now coming down into turn 10. He's got to do the same thing all over again, and that's not only the issue he may have to deal with, because by the time he gets back out of turn 16 onto the main street, there may be another group of cars <laughs> making their way back out onto the racetrack. So very difficult in this 15-minute session, already only 11 and a half minutes remaining. So just find your position. Still waiting to see one driver car pairing actually record. Andres van Thor, well, just he's gone out. So no one has yet recorded a flying lap that would indicate what the pace is likely to be. Yolok goes on to that flying lap. Behind the 90 Mercedes, oh, no, hold on, oh, the 52 Ferrari. So the best lap so far, Nico Basti in the 90 Mercedes, Silver Cup car, 148.1, followed by the 78, uh, that's the Lamborghini pole, and that's a 149.1. So a second between first and second is all irrelevant because these times, I would assume, will drop down pretty rapidly as certainly the pro drivers get their lap, get their hopefully one clear lap. Yeah, and actually at the moment, it's interesting to see where the various title battles are. So we're on board with Mario Engel. And here they're going to be riding every inch of curb that they think they can get away with, John, and, and running out right to the track limits. It's just to get every tiny ounce of performance out of the car. Coming into these tight turn 14, 15. And on board with Mario Engel in the number four Black Falcon Mercedes. So he needs to get the car lined up, get a good run through the final turn. So let's wait and see what will be achieved as Mario Engel comes through. That uh, Marcello, by the way, has just gone fastest. 88 and Mark and Mario Engel second fastest, but he's over half a second behind the 88 wow. Mercedes. So 144.5 is the quickest lap. That's the quickest lap we've seen all day, and certainly all over three days. So Marcello and the 88 ASP quickest of all. Miguel Molinar 
in the green on sector one and sector two. Really good looking lap from the 72 Ferrari. Don't forget they're looking to win the Endurance Cup outright. Now 14th place at the moment for 13th place for 72. Neat and tidy. Is there another lap in the tyre? That was certainly a, I mean, to talk about finding a clear bit of racetrack, Raffaele Marcello did that. So he has, on his first, in effect, flying lap, has done what everybody would like to do, and that is get in a lap time and clear air. Yep. And 144.5, as I say, is the fastest lap of the weekend to date. Looking at Marvin Kirchhoff in the R Motorsport Aston Martin, look, he was two tenths up, and in sector two has gone to two and a half tenths back, so he's lost over half a second of his advantage in sector two. Looks to me as if that was traffic related, so yeah. the Aston comes through the final corner and wait to see in Jimmy Pla in the Pro-Am. Mercedes number 87 got second pickers. Kekhofer yep. has gone now, second pickers. Pla down to third, so a good time. Red flag. Oh, oh. Not again, the 93 Ferrari. Yeah, this Ferrari's been in all sorts of trouble. This is the second time it's caused a red flag this weekend. Chris Buncombe off in the gravel. Is that exit of turn three, or going into turn three? Let's look and see, oh, oh. was that, oh, that was Mercedes, was the contact that. to Mercedes, that's the Ram Racing Mercedes, first of all. Yeah. And look at the way it's just going sideways on the gravel, and the danger is, of course, you get a bite. In the meantime, Dries van Thor and the number two Audi has gone, that's then, is that a, it can't be a sympathy spin from Chris Buncombe. No, I so think totally that was in, earlier in the corner. Yeah, but much earlier. So Dries van Thor has gone second, quickest on the 145.0. Still just under half a second away. So now we, we saw Amadel Harthy earlier on. Raymond Voss and Tom Onslow Cole in that 74 Mercedes. They are the crew that are trying to overhaul the Oman Racing Indeed. Uh, Aston Martin for the Pro Am title for drivers and for teams. So it's Ram Racing versus Oman TF Sport and Tom Onslow Cole and Raymond Voss versus Amadel Harthy, Charlie Eastwood, and Sally Yollock. The good news is the clock has stopped. So everybody can get the yeah. car back into the pits, and uh, whether they, uh, well, I doubt they're going to change tyres. They don't have that flexibility. But the key uh, is that the front row right now, and I think the lap time where we had second quickest was the number two Audi has now vanished off our timing and scoring. I wonder if it's lost its time for some well, reason. Lap time of car 90 has been cancelled. Yeah, not any information on car number two. No. It was shown a second quickest. That was three span four and the Audi. So that car has disappeared. And I don't see it. I'm looking to see where it is. No, it was second quickest yeah. yesterday as well. So it looks like they have lost the time. Now, the real problem with the red flag, John, is somebody, and probably quite a few somebodies, will have been right in the middle of the only hot lap they're going to get on the tyre, and then they have to back it off and bring it back in. So they might have half a decent lap left in the tyre, or maybe a full lap. Maybe they were good for one and a half, but, it, you know, you're going to be hard-pressed to know, aren't you? Well, it's, it's always the way. I mean, yeah. there's always going to be one driver, or maybe more than that, who will be just on that lap at the point when the red flag comes up. That's... Nothing you can do about it, it's the no. way events. There's Jimmy Plough's Mercedes being pushed back. And, uh, yeah, Jim Plough yeah, in the, in the title hunt yeah. on his own because yeah. he's had a variety of uh, different teammates throughout the season. So Jim Plough in that 87 Mercedes is the one who's battling. He's third in the Pro-Am rankings. In the uh, standings, Sally Ollick, Charlie Eastwood, Amad al Harty, ahead of Raymond Voss and Tom Onslow Cole. And Chris Froggett in that uh, Sky Ferrari. Um, again, they seem to be having a, a pretty uh, star cross weekend, he and Jonathan Hui. They've been joined by Chris Buncombe for this weekend. Yeah, I mean, that car normally is bulletproof, but it's been off yeah. twice this weekend, uh, and for reasons that we never fully got our heads around. No. So it everyone back into the pit lane now, waiting for the red flag to be withdrawn and uh, track to go green, but they've still got to drag the, the... There it is. Look at the gravel. Yeah. That was well buried, wasn't it? Just <sighs> too wide, too early, and the exit of the corner gets onto the... Outside of the corner, there is a load of tyre rubber and other rubbish, and, uh, and there's... 
It just looks like a simple back end snap over steer and around yeah. she goes. But and rather very early in yeah. turn three. But don't forget when when that car spun and caused a red flag early in the first free practice session. It, there was then station in a track, had to be moved, got dragged back to the pit lane, and then spent the rest of the session in the pits, never re-emerged. And so it seemed that that was definitely not driver error. And whatever caused that incident yesterday, you now look at this going, mm, Chris Bunkham doesn't normally make no. driving errors like that. And you wonder, well, OK, has it still got a legacy of whatever the initial problem was? Rover Racing, what are the Porsches going to do here? You know, hot, dry conditions. When it gets really hot, that's going to limit tyre grip as well. And that's almost like when it's raining, when you see the Porsche often coming to the fore. So the 54 car, that should be perhaps a factor as well as the two Rover racing cars, the 98 and the 99. But this has been a track where Mercedes has done well. Black Falcon won the race here last year, won the title here last year. Can the number four car do that again? Well, so many questions. I mean, uh, Luckily, uh, we've look, got three hours to try and answer we're, we're, them. That'll unfold <laughs> later on this afternoon. The 54 Porsche, the Dynamic Motorsport, that car currently is 17th quickest. The 99, the sister car, the row racing car, uh, is further down the field, 19th, whereas the 98 Roman Duma has recorded a fifth quickest time. Bearing in mind that the times that were set yesterday by that 98 Porsche is, what, half a second quicker than Roman Duma, but Roman Duma had only done one flying lap. So the Ferrari's yeah. back under its own steam, heading back towards the pit lane, and hopefully the track will be going green very shortly. So a lot more performance from a lot more of the field that uh, we've yet to see, but the, certainly the, st the stellar performance so far today has been that of Raffaele Marcello. Yep. Still over half a second advantage from the 76 Aston Martin of Marvin Kerhofer. OK, it looks like everybody is getting ready to go back to green. Fast lane has been opened, so people can go and queue at pit exit. Tris Van Tour shown as aboard the number two Audi. That car was second fastest in yesterday's hot second practice session. Pre-qualifying as we go green, the final eight minutes for driver one. OK, well, we're showing green lights but nobody is leaving the pit lane. The clock is running again, so people should be leaving the pit lane. 74 Mercedes comes in. Yeah, it noses itself into the, the pit lane rather than doing the reverse in, so maybe they want to put that car into the actual garage. I don't know, we have to wait to see. Very congested pit lane here at Barcelona as everyone lines up. Clock's running, but yeah. nobody's... Why is nobody leaving the pit lane? There seems to be a slight break in communication. The reason nobody's leaving, presumably, is that we can't see the, on the back of that pillar. Is there still a red light? It might be a red light there, but it's certainly green on timing and scoring. Well, they, they've already lost about a minute of the running time. There we so go. here we go. So there's the green light at pit exit. Yeah, it looks like the, the dots weren't entirely joined together there. So cars heading back out on track. You saw an awful lot of team there, John, with the cars up on the jacks, no tyres on the car because they've gone straight back into the heaters to try and hold the, the heat that the driver had managed to work into them. See what they can manage now. Theoretical best of the three fastest sectors that have been set so far, uh, two by Raffaele Marcello and sector one by Marvin Kirchhofer. Theoretical best lap that could, has been, could have been produced so far is a 44.37, and Marcello did a 44.59. So he was quickest in sector two and sector three in the Mercedes, the Aston Martin quickest in sector one. So the only car that has actually exceeded the times that we saw Saturday afternoon is that 88 Mercedes. Uh, we're still waiting to see what Porsche will do, the 98 car, Roman Dumas, Muller and Jamenet, it was actually Mathieu Jamenet who set that faster time. They were both within the 144 second, uh, and the sister car, the 99, was just 145, just outside that one minute 44. So more performance to come from those Rover Racing Porsche as the 88 sits in the pits, I would imagine, fairly comfortable. Yep. Yeah, fairly happy with that. And maybe uh, Raffaele Marcello has just gone, OK, that's it, OK, there you go. So another minute added on to allow for the fact that uh, a minute sort of elapsed. So has the time jump? No, still 
the clock ah now on our timing screen the clock now says six minutes 40 to go whereas it said five minutes 40 uh, on the tv graphics so when we get down to zero uh, we'll try and remind each other that there's another minute left uh, so yeah, that'll save you shouting at your tv screens so early in the morning five 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 let's have a look uh, amici in that FMF racing Lamborghini. In fact, that car was slightly quicker than the 563, which is the normal go-to car within the FFF racing team. So the clock is now updated, so it's now showing correctly. So six minutes of the session remaining, so the clock has self-updated. And the Ferrari is back out again, having had that little trip into the gravel. So Chris Bunkham back behind the wheel, back down the pit lane, back onto the racetrack. Yeah. Most of the cars back out on track. Oh, not oh. again. And that's a bit of rally crossing from another Ferrari. One of the Ronaldo Pierre Eretz. Yeah, so that's Ferrari 488, number 488, Pierre Eretz, the uh, German born American business boy, a businessman now, uh, also a, a vineyard owner. Is that a vintner? No, it's not. A vintner is somebody who manufactures wine rather than grows, I guess. Yeah, well, I think there would be both. somebody who would probably produce the wine. Yeah. In America, it's quite normal that you've got people who grow grapes but don't make wine. Yeah. And vintners who make wine but don't grow, don't grow grapes. Yeah. Albert Costa in 563. Now, there's a name that we need to mention because the third driver habitually in the 563 this year has been Dennis Lind, but he's not fit to drive this weekend. So Barcelona boy Albert Costa has been brought in at the last moment. Albert Costa, to me, always still looks like a motorcycle racer with his wild hair, but he's he knows the circuit well and is able to drop into this car and has produced decent times out of it so far as well. I mean, they're currently 11th quickest heat again, like most drivers have only done one flying lap, so this will be the completion of what would most likely be his third flying lap coming down out of turn nine, and he's fractionally yeah. down. Uh, a personal best, well, not a personal best, he's plus three. Yeah, no, he's lost he's it lost in that second sector, sector, hasn't yeah. he? Middle yeah. sector, he's lost a little bit of time. But again, his job is to support Calderelli and Mapelli and just get what he can out of the car, bring it back alive, hand it over, and allow them to try and keep their championship battle alive. Interestingly, Phil Keane in the sister car, the 519 line beginning into the top 10. Yeah. Equally, the 72 Ferrari, which is in the race all afternoon, up to eighth quickest with Molina. Yeah. Miguel Molina. There's the... Uh, Shake of the head from Andrea <laughs> Calderetti. Not impressed. Not impressed with that lap from Albert Costa. Disappointed. 107 Bentley. Oh Been able to see the Bentley is the number eight. 108 Bentley currently ninth. Yeah, 107 is going to be a long way away, isn't it? 14th. Yeah, 1.15 seconds off. Uh, the first practice yesterday, one second covered 24 cars with two thousandths between the fastest two lap times. Nico Bastian, already the champion. 90 Mercedes racing for the final time this weekend in the silver category. And Nico Bastian with Timo Bogoslavski and Filippo Fraga. They already have the titles tied up. Now, Dries van Voor has recorded a time. We, we saw a time, but then it was deleted, so he's now gone. Fourth quickest under the second row of the grid. What is he? 21 hundredth of a second slower than the 87 Mercedes Benz. As we look at the 90 thundering its way. Oh, oh. Mauro Engel. What was that all about? That was a real getting on the gas early. And you don't often see a Mercedes AMG GT3 getting that sort of squirrely back to Albert Costa, trying to do a bit more, maybe to satisfy and please Andrea Calderelli. He needs that car to be with, with Costa's skill in certainly inside the top 10 currently it is 14 well this is the time where it's really hard to get the extreme limit out of a car that you're not familiar with isn't it comes across the line so any improvement for five six three well personal best in sector one and Gone three up, up to fifth yeah so that will bring some satisfaction Child already happier now uh, and for costa as well new boy straight into a car that he's not familiar with top five can't Good argue effort. with that in a field no, this no, tough no no the shake of the head one lap earlier has now been contrasted with a nod of the head yeah 
from yeah. team boss Andrea Calderi. Dirk Werner in the 99 Porsche into 10th place. So we've got looking to see where. Well, Dries Van Tours just gone fourth, Albert Costa fifth. So Mario Engel now down to sixth in this car. Not a better sector two. But he was up on everybody in sector one. But that was a massive shake of the head. So yeah. watch and see coming through onto pit straight. So Mario Engel needs to get that car. Where is he? Fifth, sixth currently. Yeah. 0.62 away. That's 0.9 no away. No, there's nothing left in those tyres, is there? Nothing at all. And the 50, uh, the 90 uh, car right behind. So that's the uh, Nico Bastian car. Dries van Four has further wow. improved up to second place. Three tenths of a second now behind Raffaele Marcello. And that car is still in the pit lane. Still got a comfortable enough advantage over the rest of the field with less than well, 45 seconds of the session remaining. So only this lap you can complete. The time will stand as we look at Dries van Thor in that number two. Again, stellar effort from this young Belgian driver. I mean, outstanding all yeah. season. Has not really had the rewards for all the efforts he's put in. And it's interesting, isn't it, that he was able to lose a time, come out, do another faster lap, do a faster lap again. We saw that yesterday, even in the heat, it was able to put in two or three successive faster laps. Well, and think, nobody else had that. I think we're now looking at putting Andreas van Four into the category of being one of those special ones who can drag a time out in extremis, but everybody else is you know, saying, oh, it ain't any good, the track's gone slow, no more grip on my tires. He is one of those drivers who can manage to achieve that. But of course, it's all for nothing now. He's got yeah. traffic, everybody's backed out. Well, gonna now get into now the pit he's lane. done the time. Now yeah. the checkered flag is out. He's heading to the pit lane as well. So the team have time to turn the car around. There's a little five minute pause so that everybody has time to turn the car around for the second driver. So but, uh, interestingly, the third row of the grid is the two prime contestants who are battling with the 72 yes. Ferrari. The, sorry, the, I'm looking at, it's the 563 Lamborghini yeah. and the number four Mercedes. And the 72 Ferrari back on the sixth row of the grid. That Albert. needs to find a lot of time. Good Albert Costa is shaking his head a lot. I, I don't think there's anything to be shaking your head about. I mean, unless he expected to put it on pole. Well, I think every driver, I mean, particularly at your home race, you're going yeah. to think, oh, I could have done better, I should have done better. I know I had more time available. So watch and see what's this little incident done at turn 14. Oh, that's the 72 Ferrari, and that's yeah, the, uh, the Riemann Voss goal. driven yeah. Mercedes. Ram Racing. Oh. What? That's you see, those are the issues that 72 can do nothing about. When accidents come and find you, when fate plays its hand, sometimes there's just nothing you can do. So there is the Exmoto GP Albert Costa. Yeah, it looks like he does. Yeah, it looks, does. Still looks like he should be in a, in a bike racing yeah. paddock. He's got uh, Andrea, he's got Brendan Hartley hair. Yeah, Andrea Caldarelli, the team boss and uh, lead driver in the FFF racing Lamborghini. So just getting a little bit of feedback, explaining what the track feels like, where the car is good, where it's not good. Yeah, I think that's a little bit of Spanish or Italian. Good. Anyway, pat yeah. on the head from Andrea Calderelli. So good job, well done. Got the car up to where he needed it to be. And yeah. One position ahead of their principal contestant, apart from the 72 Ferrari. Tom's up, one Tom up. Yeah, proper job, I think, by Albert Costa. You know, it's not easy. He was saying there was, there was talk on Wednesday that they might need him, and on Thursday they said, yeah, please, can you be here? And then on Friday he's out on track. So uh, that's a, a really solid job. 563, fifth fastest for the moment. But look at the speeds that... The Mercedes number 88 produced, Raffaele Marcello, 38 hundreds clear, not three thousandths. No wonder they sat on that time when the red flag came out, saved the tyre, because at some stage they're going to need to use those tyres. Dries Van Tour setting the time in the number two Audi. Marvin Kirchhofer, the 76 Aston Martin. to so Mercedes, Audi, Aston. Then Mercedes, Lamborghini, and Mercedes. We're starting to see a bit of a pattern in that. So the Mercedes producing speed. And Jim Pla, fourth fastest. That's impressive stuff. 
So there are the other times that have been set further on down the field. And again, a massive field. It's tough enough in the race, John, with 45 cars trying to find a, a decent run, but trying to find one lap in traffic. When you've only got one to play with, you can't keep circulating and, and just bang in laps until one's clean. Just, just a note, the, the, the Ram Racing Mercedes, which again is in, in the hunt for its own particular category, it's down in 41st position after this session. Now, that's one of the cars that caused the red flag to be thrown. Well, let's get down to the pit lane, hear from Louise Beckett for the first time, and she is with the fastest man so far, Raffaele Marcello. Raffaele Marcello is out of the 88 Mercedes. Uh, you put in not just one, but some great times there, kept improving. No, actually I did my luck with my first push, then I, I boxed, so I mean, the car was, was good straight away. I managed to add um, a good gap from the cars in front in quali and I have a, a clean lap and I think this was the key of my of my good lap. Here in Barcelona I, I always feel feel good. Also last year I did pole in Q3, now in Q1 and yeah, it's, the car was mega. Now let's hope my teammate will finish the job. So yes, Mike Meadows is in the car now. Do you think he can keep you at the top of the time sheet? I hope, we'll see. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I, mean, I, think, uh, I think that Raffaele, I mean, he, he, he went out, did that one flying lap, achieved the, the quickest time in that session comfortably by over three tenths of a second. Now Michael Meadows is going to step in. Michael Meadows has not been in the car as regularly as his previous years, so he's got a big responsibility to do the best that he can to try and maintain the advantage. That three, eight, three tenths of a second is certainly something to have in your pocket. But again, all around you, there's going to be competitive. I mean, the number two RD, Ezekiel Perez, compact. Not quite sure if Ezekiel can match the time of Dries van Thor. Alex Lind in the 76 Aston Martin may well get very close to Kirchhofer's time. So that's when Caldarelli, second driver in the uh, 563 Lamborghini, and Yalma Berman, number four. They're going to be very, very closely matched. So very difficult to call. Yeah, absolutely right. Seventh fastest is the best of the Porsches. The 98 car, Roman Dumas, just set the time. Sven Muller in the car now, and Mathieu Jaminet, who was the fastest man in the pre-qualifying yesterday afternoon, he will be the final driver out. So, fast lane is open. Everybody heading out to queue for this 15-minute session. There is the 90 Mercedes, the champions already crowned in the Silver Cup. Nico Bastian, Timo Bogoslavski, and Felipe Fraga. And ready to go out right at the front of the field is the sole Honda this weekend. Well, Honda having a successful time yesterday in the Blancpain GT Sports Club, claiming the championship title. That was tied up in yesterday's first race of the weekend for Jens Reno Moller with the Moller Racing Honda NSX. So that's the first major international title for an NSX in its current guise and we also saw in that race the debut or the or the reappearance let's say of GT2 as a racing category these cars are all GT3 and this is absolutely the staple of GT racing across the globe but GT2 making its comeback with Audi uh, debuting an R8 GT2 which looks quite a lot similar but very different it's got a big snorkel air intake over the top of the roof huge rear wing very different looking front end and a bit more horsepower yeah and a bit more horsepower a little less brakes it seems than the gt3 cars that was its weak point uh, compared to the mercedes that ended up winning the race but uh, yeah it had some had some grunt in in a straight line that's for sure well let's get down to the pit lane again with louise beckett and Albert Costa, an impressive debut in the Lamborghini. Albert Costa in the 563. Uh, you've got a fifth. Seems good to us, but you didn't seem happy when you got out of the car. You were shaking your head. I wasn't because I thought I was P20. Actually, I felt really slow in my lap because I got traffic every single lap. And uh, then we had a small issue in the car, so I was a bit scared because there was an issue in the brakes. So I was a bit scared and trying to manage the situation. You know, it's my first time. They are playing for the championship. I want to do as much better I can. I, want, I don't want to do any mistake. So I would say there is some pressure from them to me. So P5, it's okay. First time this year. 
I, I think I can be happy, but you know, I was a bit under like, what's gonna happen? <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, it's nice to see a driver, in spite of being unhappy, absolutely bubbling, and the smile on his face tells me everything. <laughs> he is a real live wire, isn't he? And, uh, yeah, he, he was unhappy because he didn't think that he'd actually produced the time that he had. Sven Muller in the 98 Rover Racing Porsche. Trying hard not to say BMW at the end of that phrase there. It almost came out. And there goes the 72 SMP Racing Ferrari. That's a 22-point leader in our Endurance Cup uh, title race. Miguel Alicien, uh, uh, Miguel Alicien, Miguel Molina and Davide Rigon, the trio there. Just watching number four, Yalma Berman, who's got, in his mind, a significant amount of work to do. That car is currently sixth of all. We just saw the Bentley thundering through the 107. And the, that, is that... Well, there was seven who's behind the wheel of that one. Uh, Stephen Kane now. Stephen Kane, yeah. Yeah, Jordan Pepper set the first lap time. And looks like Stephen's found himself a bit of a gap in traffic. Still waiting to see Bentley really sort of light up the circuit. It's been a difficult year. Stephen way, way wide in the exit of turn three. So fastest overall it's in odd, sector isn't, one. Odd, isn't it? You go to Paul Ricard, three years in a row, the Bentley has come out on top, and yet that's been sort of the glimmer of, of hope in their season. Got to Spa, and the, and the car was just nowhere near as close as they were in 2016, 2017, when they were genuine uh, race victory contenders. Absolutely. I mean, Spa was a massive disappointment indeed for the M Sport team and for the, the Bentley brand, of course, we say we're talking about the centenary year, and they put an enormous amount of effort into trying to secure a victory this year in the, such a, a, an important event, I mean, yeah. the biggest event of the year, and with a double points hole, gave so many other combinations in different categories, the opportunity, fastest overall, second sector, so Stephen Kane, assuming yeah. he doesn't get delayed by the Ferrari directly ahead, and that's going to come into play, and is he backed out of it? He has backed, he's two purples and he's backed out of it. Well, there is confidence. I mean, Stephen was certainly in this early phase, two purples, but he realized he was going to waste the last sector by getting too close to the car. Now, what's he going to do? Well, we cut back to the end of the straight coming into turn three. Now, you just see the 72 Ferrari going through the shot there. And uh, that car, of course, was clipped by the 74 Mercedes, the Riemann Voss car, the Ram Racing Mercedes, in the first part of qualifying. And the stewards will look at that incident later. Uh, I feel perhaps there might be a penalty heading towards Riemann Voss and Tom Onslow Cole. And they're in a the battle, another championship battle for Pro Am drivers and teams. So that's a penalty they can ill afford. Fastest lap at the moment, Liam Mashitsky in the 77 Barwell Lamborghini. Now, that was the car that clattered the 107 Bentley yesterday when it was being driven by Adrian Amstutz. And uh, we heard from the, the team boss, uh, Mark Lemmer. He was at, at dinner in our restaurant last night, looking very relaxed. Everything's fine with the car. It was majorly cosmetic there, damage. Ooh. So Calderelli has, on the middle sector, found a bit of space. Again, he's got traffic coming up through turns 11 and 12, then the, the short run down to the right-hander at 13. Hopefully, hopefully not going to come into such an, an effect that will well be bearing on what Calderelli will do at the conclusion of this lap. Should just Over, about. Yeah, overall it is the 90, Timur Bogosleski in that 90 Mercedes that is yeah. on average quickest, but this car is now going to be fastest overall to come across the line. Yeah. Great well, yeah, Calderelli, yes. The lap is a 144.9. The average is a 145.078. So it's the 563 Lamborghini quickest overall. Currently, the 88 Mercedes. That's the car driven by Michael Meadows. And then the sister car to the 563 in third place. Yelma Berman from 51 thousandths up to 52 thousandths back. This is very close indeed from Yelma Berman in number four Black Falcon Mercedes until the final sector where he tried to give himself some room you saw he lost six or gave away six seconds there so is there enough room now it looks like he's catching the cars in front rather too quickly on this lap as well so he's got a rover racing porsche in front of him 
And he'll have to hope that that is opening the doors. Andrea Caldarelli fastest in 5.63. Second fastest at the moment is the 5.19 FFF Racing Team Lamborghini with Giacomo Altoe taking over from Phil Keane, who did the first run in that. And Sven Muller goes second. Indeed, indeed. Suddenly, the Porsche are at the races. This is the car that was quickest in Saturday afternoon session. So Sven Muller has popped the Porsche provisionally. And that car is actually overall third quickest when you combine the first and second sessions. And we've still got eight minutes of the second session to run out. So it's the number two. Uh, Audi, that is actually the car that is provisionally on pole position. Yeah. The 88 Mercedes, which was the quickest car by a country mile in Q1, is now overall second row of the grid, fourth place. Ezekiel Perez Compank has gone four fastest in the number two Audi. And again, like Costa, you know, that's his job to get as much out of it as he can. So the number two on average is currently ahead of 563. So look at the frustration. Oh. I mean, Jan McCormick came up behind the Aston Martin. Again, how do you manage 44, 45 cars yeah. on track? So what are you going to do? There's a small be difference. It's very close. It could be a, 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 an improvement. It could be a significant improvement. But has it cost him time? Yeah, it cost him four tenths nearly. Sixth There's the place. number two. Yeah, whoa. Seventh overall, but sixth in this session. Yeah. Second overall. So Ezekiel Perez compact, four fastest on his lap. Timo Bogoslawski in the number 90 Mercedes, still the fifth fastest lap for this group of drivers, and that is the silver class car. Yeah, currently that is 11th overall for yep. the two sessions. Combined, Alex Lynn and the 76, they were quick in that first session. So Alex Lynn comes through, has he got a clear lap? What's he got ahead of him as well to see in that shot? Looking he's got, pretty he, he's got a pretty clear section, final sector of the circuit. So oh, if you've got that in, oh, he's got his, this is back up to turn nine. Yeah. So uh, we'll Alex. to see what happens with that 76 when it comes across start finish line. There is the 88 Michael Meadows. So the Aston Martin is coming across the line now. So we're currently we're in sixth place combined. And seventh in that session didn't improve yeah. on this last lap, got held up. So the 76 Aston Martin, third row of the grid. There is Michael Meadows thundering across. Third fastest overall for the 88 car. So Michael Meadows looks like he's had the best out of those tyres. That lap left him two and a half seconds behind the quickest. But he's only 13th overall yep. in this session. So the, 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 the three tenths plus of a second that Raffaele Marcello had in hand has really, really helped Michael Meadows yep. keep that number 88 Mercedes on the second row of the grid alongside the 98 Porsche. Well, look at Yama Berman's lap from 76,000 in front to 3,500 back and nearly four tenths back at the line. Again, traffic, 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 traffic. Yeah, and he's got a Lamborghini in the Nexus yeah. and the 87 Mercedes directly ahead of him, so that's not going to really give him much opportunity or hope of doing anything on this lap of five minutes of the session remaining. Back to the Ferrari 72. By well, at least in half a second off on the first sector of this lap, so this isn't going to do much for them at all. Mikhail Alation behind the wheel. It's having a little adjust down in the cockpit as well, so again, this is not a searing hot lap. See all the gravel there in that little uh, flick-flack chicane, seventh and eighth. This is not great for Mikhail Alation. Has not found a gap in traffic. And, I mean, 19th in this session today, yeah. but critically, down in 14th overall, seventh row of the grid for this car. Now, that lady Regan, when he gets behind the wheel, no doubt, will ginger it up a little bit. Well, but uh, it's a long know. way back to come forward. But, you know, it only takes three tenths or four tenths of a second on one flying lap, yeah. and that makes a massive difference. And, and they need that. If they're in 14th on the grid, that is ground zero for stuff breaking out all around them in turn one. Looks pretty much like everybody has shot the goose. Yep. Everybody has run their tires, their fresh set of tires. Nothing coming up on the screen indicating purple. We're getting the odd bit of green indicating a personal best in one of the three sectors. Back on board, clear air in front of the 72 Ferrari. But no, it's not. It was the, <laughs> I well, thought it was just well, that, That's one of the things now, this end of the session, there's four minutes, there's time for him to get a quick lap now and a banker 
after this if he's got any tyres left and cars are peeling off into the pit lane. The track is emptying like somebody's pulled the drain plug. It is, nevertheless, if it was out of ahead of the Ferrari, is that the 74 Mercedes, the Ram? No, it's not. It's the Porsche. It's the 54 Porsche, the dynamic sport. Now, the question is, has Elysian got any tyre left to perform with here? Well, it ain't going to be as good as it was when it started. That's the one That's thing that you can problem. be sure of. It's a matter of how much that tyre would have been used, or in some cases would have been abused, to know whether there's anything left in the tank for the 72 Ferrari. Currently, it's 14th overall. Currently, it's 19th in this session. And it's doubtful on this lap we're going to see any, well, 26, six, or over half a second down. Oh. But the, that half a second would make a considerable difference if we can maintain whatever six tenths of a second disadvantage. So coming through 12, let the car run out the edge of the racetrack, kicks up a little bit of gravel and then into 13. Keep it neat and tidy, don't overdrive the car. Slow it down here, get it slow in, then now drive the car hard and use the exit and he's coming in the pit lane. So he's yeah. given up two and a half minutes to remain and that's it all over for the 72 Ferrari. That's tough, that's really tough. Michele Leishin, only 19 fastest in this group of cars. And as you said, John, that leaves them on the outside of row seven of the grid. Now, if you're beyond row two further back, then anything can come your way. In fact, if you're on pole position, anything can come your way, particularly with the way the corners run here. Well, so, uh, David Rigon getting suited up, ready to try and I don't know, dig no, the no, fat no. out of the fire here somehow. Well, he's going to have to dig very deep because the, the, the position that that 72 Ferrari in is putting itself at a big disadvantage. Starting up right now, they'll be on the seventh row of the grid, and there's be so many cars all around who are going to be running at the pace of the 72 that the natural speed the 72 would be running at if it was at the front is going to be denied. He needs, he needs to be getting changed in a telephone box. He needs his underpants outside his race suit because he needs a Superman lap. What he actually really needs is a clean lap, a gap in traffic. Now, if they can work that and somehow put him out in clear air, then Regon, we know, has got the pace. Yep. And we've got just a minute remaining, and, and before, all but seven or eight of the cars are actually yep. on the racetrack. Everybody has done their run. They've had the best they can get out of the tyre and they're back in the pits getting ready for this final session of qualifying. And we're going to be looking at Alex Riberas, Marco Mappelli, Vance and Abril, Mathieu Jaminet, Giovanni Venturini, Lucas Stolz, Jake Dennis, Christopher Hasser, Broikos and uh, Matt Campbell, Braga, Hutchinson, and on it goes. Okay, on and on and on. And you haven't mentioned Stuart Hall and Com Ledigar and yeah, just a huge slew of talent. So 72 Ferrari, final pressure drop on the tyres. Michele Lishin not looking overjoyed with that, was he? And that's, I don't think anything that he's done wrong, but just catching cars in the wrong place on the wrong lap. I mean, it, it is sadly a lottery, but yeah. that's part of the skill. I mean, some drivers do find that, you know, that magical lap where they can nail it, and particularly if it's on your first flying lap, and that was what Mark Raffaele Marcello did yep. in Q1. And he's you know, a typical Marcello, Joe Cool, I mean, just stands there, not first lap, nailed it, Bosch, <laughs> job done. Well, what are we seeing here? Trouble with the Audi and one of the Lamborghinis. Is that Andrea Caldarelli squeezing? No, it's not, it's the 555. Yeah. That was, I think it was Taylor Proton. He ended up not doing a bad job, actually. That car in Silver Cup is into 15th place, and that was... That was the Tempto fifth. racing Audi. Yeah, he, uh, we could, we could was a bit squabbling of, with. Yeah. So the 555 in overall terms is on the 8th row, the grid in 15th position. Alongside, presently, 107 Bentley, Stephen yeah. Payne. Yeah. There will be a lot of frustration <laughs> in the pit lane when this qualifying session ends. <laughs> It, it is inevitable, isn't it? When you, you put 45 cars out, clear laps are not going to be likely. They're not impossible, but they're not likely. And again, and again, you know, when we go green, within 60 seconds, the pit lane has basically emptied and everybody's out on track. And yet the final four minutes of the session, there's probably only a third of the field circulating. 
I mean, it would Does anybody dare gamble well, it, on waiting and going late? Let's take a look at how they are so far on the aggregate times. The number two Audi ahead of the 563 Lamborghini. Row two currently will be the 88 Mercedes, the 98 Porsche ahead of the 519 Lamborghini and the number four Mercedes. Best Aston 76 car will be in seventh position. Top Bentley 108 13th. 72 are championship leaders in the Endurance Cup. 14th place, not a great qualifying for them. And further back, you can see how everybody else is shaping up. This is after two of the drivers have had their run. The final drivers will get in now, and then the average of all three will decide our final grid. So what big shakeups are we going to see? I think the number 107 Bentley, Jules Gugnon, Possibly, and also the, the, the Aston Martin, Maxim Martin, yeah. directly behind it. Those are two cars, one would assume, just on driver ability and quality, should move forward. Yeah. Seb Morris will be out in the Parker Bentley, place 37th or 38th at the minute. Let's get down into the pit lane. Louise with Andrea Caldarelli. See how they're going at Lamborghini. Andrea Calderetti, fastest in that session. Uh, so you can definitely put the Budapest dramas behind you because this is going to plan. Yeah, that's even a bigger drama, no? <laughs> um, yeah, it was uh, it was good. Honestly, after uh, yesterday, the day before, we, we struggled a little bit. So uh, it felt very good to find uh, again the pace uh, with the car and a good feeling. So cross finger for Marco now, but I'm sure he's going to do a good job. And uh, how's Costa do, uh, fitting in with the team? Uh, he did definitely a pretty good job uh, in Q1. So nothing, nothing special. Is uh, he's very quick. We know. We all knew that. So nothing, nothing really particular. But so far, so good. Good. Thank you. Yeah, he has fitted in very well, Albert Costa. Fifth fastest in his session in a car that he's not raced before. That's pretty impressive stuff. And uh, Andrea Caldarelli looking fairly happy at the moment. 5.63. John separated from the fastest car on the average of the two times by six thousandths of a second. And the third fastest car, the 88 Mercedes, six thousandths behind them. I tell thousandths you what, of a second, it's ridiculous. A, a hummingbird would have difficulty flapping its <laughs> wings at that time, wouldn't it? It's like the thing the, the other day where uh, they were saying that uh, an overboost on, uh, on the Kurs unit gave them a millionth of a second advantage on the lap time. Well, obviously, that's theoretical because you couldn't measure that. But, you know, when we're measuring but thousands something of a second... The point is that it was measurable by a it machine. Was, it was calculatable. It was, it, was, it was an infringement. <laughs> we just was, got a quick glimpse of the R Motorsport Aston Martins, that familiar grey that we've seen for the past two seasons. Actually looks like quite a nice colour. Yep. Yeah, if you wanted to buy an Aston, it would be probably one of my colour choices. I'm still saying road cars in primer. Mm, mm, I, I prefer a colour colour. So, Albert Costa in the 563 Lamborghini doing a good anchor leg. And Andrea Caldarelli producing the goods as well to keep them very firmly towards the top of the table. Number five Audi, we didn't see that in real time, but having a big lose as the car got away onto the gravel and fortunately hit nothing. That's the silver contender. 72 Ferrari, didn't see much of them and they didn't see much of the quick times either. They are struggling for pace as everybody tries to find room on this racetrack to work their magic behind the wheel. Finding the extreme edge, John Watson, always tough in qualifying, but when there's just fast-moving cars everywhere, it adds that extra little frisson of drama and excitement. And, of course, the danger is that if you do make contact, particularly as a pro driver, as we look at Matt Campbell, who's going to be in the 99 Rover Racing Porsche, then there could be a penalty. There is a rule that says a, a pro driver whose contact with an AM, for example, will always be deemed to be the responsible party. Yep. So you've got to bear all these other elements that could have a, 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 an effect on the outcome, certainly in a race, definitely be a drive-through. What the penalty would be, for example, in qualifying might be a time disallowed. Well, look at the starry lineup that Rover Racing have got in both these cars. In the 98, Sven Muller, Roman Duma, and Mathieu Jaminet. Jaminet setting the fastest time of all in the heat yesterday. And this isn't exactly unloaded with talent either. Stephen Kane, Jordan Pepper, and Jules Gounod. 
That's a great driver lineup in the 107 Bentley team. And Jules Gunnar been very laconic, laid back, very much the son of his dad. Yeah. Jean Marc Gunnar, a personality character, and Jules carrying that forward and, uh, you know, extremely well versed in motor racing and, and, and understanding the languages yeah. and, and how to deal with a tricky or awkward question but went to meet him when he turned up at spa for the 24 hours two years ago for the first time because the previous season i've been commentating on him doing two litre formula renault euro cup and so obviously knowing jean marc for years and years went to find jules first man i saw in the garage was jean marc had a chat with him and he said oh come on i introduced him uh, brought his dad over so i met son grandson and grandfather the, the three generations of the gunon family and jean marc said that i run a small car dealership in the south of france I always said to Jules, we haven't got the money. I can't get you into Formula One. But he did the year of single seaters to teach him racecraft on his road to GT racing. Well, let's find out what ails the 72 Ferrari. Louise is with Michaela Lucian. Yeah, it's not the uh, sort of time we're not used to seeing from the 72 Michaela Lucian. So was there a problem or was it traffic? What was the issue? Uh, yeah, we mainly had traffic and we had nowhere to go unfortunately so we needed to run into traffic and uh, it was just a nightmare because uh, when you have uh, so many cars in the front and so many cars in the back of you you even cannot uh, let them by because uh, you're gonna disturb their lap and if you're gonna go off the line you're gonna destroy your tires will be full of dust and so it's kind of you need to drive where you land in which spot you land you need to continue driving unfortunately my spot was a bit unlucky but uh, but that's okay we have three hours of race and we have Davide in the car now so maybe he's gonna be a bit more lucky uh, so what we Davide as you say is in the car now what's the plan you're gonna let him hold out here maybe traffic go by a bit or, or what you know it's it's hard to it's hard to manage the traffic really because there's so many cars on the track it's uh, Basically, it's like if you're lucky or you're not lucky, that's it. So, you never know, but I hope that uh, we'll be all right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. you. You brought up the point, would anybody be brave enough to sit out the first 10 or so minutes of this final qualifying session, knowing that by the time you get to five minutes to go, most people would have used the tire and might be thinking about just dragging it back into the garage and waiting, waiting it out. It's a, it's a, I mean, if you're back currently on the well, seventh row of the grid. It's a, I mean, I would have thought it's a good roll of the dice if you want to do that. Yeah, I mean, what's the downside? The downside is... You're not going to be much worse off. The, the downside is that somehow there's, with, you know, there are yellow flags out at the end and you can't set a quick time. That, that's the gamble. And then you've got no time left for the yellow flags to come of course, in. Of course, but it might rain. You never know. It could rain in the next <laughs> 10 minutes. Not necessarily out of this guy. Yeah, you know, Spa, Silverstone or anywhere Indeed. else. I, I grant you there's more of a chance. But, you know, for me, going out with the pack. An act of God. Sunday. You never know. Plague of Frogs. Hail, lice. I, I, I don't know. I'd, look, 107, doing this again. We saw them coming out of pit lane the last time backing up the whole field because they can't go round because they can't break the white line. So Jules Goon on there trying to create a bit of space for himself. Everybody else charging out. Then they join the traffic jam because there's the TCR jammer car in front, the 107 Bentley making ground. Well, I just wonder how one of the two Astons were trying to get through. So we've got the 88 Mercedes leading the pack from what we can see yeah. coming out of turn nine into turn 10. So 88 Mercedes has now got Vance and Abril behind the wheel. He'll be wondering whether there's anything left in the tank to challenge Marco Mappelli, who's directly ahead, or critically Alex Rivieras in the number two ID. Looking here at two of the FFF Lamborghini teammates, 519 running just ahead of 563. Now, there are two things that can go here. They can slow right down, and 563 can benefit potentially from a tow down the straight from 519. Yeah, but they're both passing the number four black Volker Mercedes, yep. and the black Volker Mercedes has just squeezed the 563 <laughs> going in the turn. Eight and nine. Do you know what? Oh, eight, seven and eight. Yeah. Our, our colleagues in the truck are spotting that, and I don't think it escaped the black Falcon pit wall either. No. Okay, let 519 go by and then shut the door. It's all, the door. all quality gamesmanship. <laughs> and here, 88 on their own let's find a clear lap bang it in 
Yeah, but this is their out lap. It's not a flying lap. They're about to go on at the conclusion of this lap onto a flying lap. Well, Vance and Abril actually is on that flying lap now, yeah. so he's got personal best, but also overall fastest. So comes out of turn five, looking forward. Lamborghini, Audi, uh, two Audis directly ahead, so the traffic is not going to step aside to let no. the 88 go through. And the problem is, you can see the Audis there weaving and warming their tyres up. That's the 17 Audi, a couple of cars ahead. He's got one of the FFF. Uh, Lamborghini's just in front. He's going to try and find a way by, but look, the number two car, number 17 car, the WRT Audis, weaving their tyres. They're on a warm up lap. He's on a flyer, trying to get it nailed. Well, he, he, a personal best, but of course yeah. it's uh, somewhat irrelevant because he well, got delayed and now he's backed out of it. Now so he's it, making room. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's frustrating for everybody. Those that are just on a lap and everybody else has completed something. Uh, and so he catches the Audis, ruining his lap. He backs up and then the Lamborghini behind him. And look, there's the 97 Aston. That was on a fast lap as well. And it gets held up. Marco Mapelli. Half a second up at the moment in 5.63. Now, they seem to have engineered a bit of a gap in traffic, and he gave some room behind 5.19. So 5.19, which is currently, where was it? It was like fourth or fifth overall. I'm just looking at the timing and scoring. Every car coming across start finish line is, it was yeah. Charlie Eastwood had gone fast enough. Finley Hutchinson in the five, Audi 146.8. And these times are going to continue dropping, waiting yeah. to see where Felipe Fraga in the, in the number 90 Mercedes, he's quickest overall. Seb Morris in the Bentley number 31, he's got second quickest. Lucas Stoltz, the blue Black Falcon Mercedes, just behind 563. So both of these looking to produce their first flying lap. Marco Mapelli, Lucas Stoltz, not closing, but ooh, Mercedes looking a little bit of a handful at the front. I mean, what we've just seen now with the times that have been recorded, waiting for. Marco Mapelli to come up to complete this lap, but it's actually number 25, Audi, the Central Lock Racing. Timon Gache and uh, now Jake Dennis in the 76 R Motorsport, Aston Martin, has yep. taken that provisional pull. Lucas Stoltz, fastest overall yep. little sector. He might see the number four Mercedes now take that away from the Aston Martin coming yep. across the line. It's Calderelli Mapelli. No, it's not. It's Lucas Stoltz in the number four. Yep. So four and five, six, three. On the provisional front row, the grid doesn't get a lot better, does it? No, Lucas Stoltz, great lap. Jules on second, Matt Campbell third in the 99 Porsche. Marco Mapelli lost ground in the final sector. Uh, he is currently fourth head of Felipe Fraga and Jake Dennis. Great lap from Jake Dennis. Purple sector one, the car's currently sixth fastest. There's Andrea Calderelli watching what's going on. Yeah, sixth fastest in this session. Currently, with amalgamated times, is in third yeah. position. And if he can maintain that pace, that could see the Aston Martin again with what eight and a half minutes or so remaining provisionally on the front row of the grid. It's all ifs, ands, or buts <laughs> as we <laughs> watch what's going on. So there is the Aston powering down the hill out of turn nine, down into turn ten, waiting to see what was the second sector. Oh. And he, well, Matt Campbell has popped the Porsche. Currently, it is in fourth position. It's dropped down to fourth position. Jules Guno in the 107 uh, Bentley was in third place. Jaminet has now gone second. It is now the 98 Porsche that is on provisional pull from the number four Black Falcon Mercedes. Wow. And Jake Dennis, tyres going away in the middle of the row. There's the 99 car. That's the Sister other Rover car. racing car. Yeah. Matt Campbell at the wheel, trying to find himself a gap, staying out of everybody's way. And again, we saw this with the Porsche yesterday, as with the number two Audi, they were able to go, cool down, go again. So Very interesting that they could do that in yeah. the, the, the heat of Saturday afternoon yeah. and the relative coolness of Sunday morning. Davide Rigo, personal best, but half a second oh, down in that yeah. middle sector. So the 72 Ferrari currently is in overall... Nowhere. Well, it's 22nd overall yeah. at the minute, but that's because it hasn't recorded a lap, okay. so it goes up to 13th. So they've pulled themselves one spot up from 14th, same row of the grid, mind. 10th overall in this session, yeah. that is the car currently holding provisional pulls, seven minutes of the session remaining, and they've got a, a massive advantage of 54 hundredths of a second over the number four Black Falcon Mercedes. Yeah. 5.63 directly behind in third place is a further massive six thousandths of a second behind the, the number four Mercedes. And the number two car, six thousandths behind them. 
over three drivers now. That's ridiculous. 54,000 first to second. Another six back to third. Another six back to fourth. 98 comes across us to see what that last lap was. There's a 144, wow. a, one, a 148, so that was a yeah. slow lap. Yeah. Just a, a cool it down lap and then have a look and have a go again. Now the question is, what's he got left? What's Mark Amapelli? Oh, who just shot off stage right? Didn't see it. We're looking down timing and scoring. No. Uh, yeah, no, coming, somebody yeah, well did. Done, yeah. well spot, good spot. That was looking timing and scoring. Lucas Stoltz currently quickest overall this session. Jaminet second, so the Mercedes number four consolidates its front row of the grid alongside the 98 Porsche. Body language of the Lamborghini not looking like Marco Mapelli is on a hurry up at the moment. Looking relatively leisurely. Uh, who's behind? Have they swapped places in the queue with 519? I think they might have. So Mapelli out through turn 16, comes across start finish line. Where oh, right. is that Better set to three. sixth place, doesn't see any... Oh, it does. It does, third fastest lap. Well, there you go. So much for my reading of the body language of the car. Giovanni Venturini in the sister car actually has gone quicker than yeah. Marco Mapelli. So Ma Ma Venturini up to fifth in the 519 FFF racing Lamborghini. So that car is into provisional third row of the grid, fifth quickest combined times as we stand, but it's still Porsche and Mercedes locking out the front row of the grid with Lamborghini and Audi second row of the grid. Five minutes to go, and as we saw the 99 Porsche a lap ago, just saw Mathieu Jaminet at 98 slow, right down, back it up, let some faster cars go by, trying to make some room for himself. I wonder if they're able to go again. Black Falcon team looking fairly happy. Lucas Stoltz is the fastest in this session. What about our Spa 24-hour winning team? GPX, the number 20 golf car. Stuart Hall in the car at the moment. That's 26th fastest. That's a silver category car here. Of course, it was loaded with factory talent at Spa. I don't think that they are showing anywhere. Wow. They're 25th overall combined. Matt Campbell, quicker again. But look at the traffic ahead of him. This yeah. is going to be an issue. Unless he can clear the Ferrari. Well, that's clearly. 72. Not the 72. It's 72, 488. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that will be, well, he's 1.1 seconds. So he's effectively, that you yeah. can see, he's backed out of it now. He realizes, what's the point? Save what I've got left yep. in my tires. But Venturini uh, on sector one, a personal best. Sector two, nothing that's remarkable. So that 519 Lamborghini looking to try and maybe get it on to provisional second row of the grid. Now, is Bentley, Matt, uh, Matt, Jr. Campbell, Jr. Yeah. Matt Campbell heading for the pits, I wonder? I think he might be. Lucas Stoltz fastest from Mathieu Jaminet. So Mercedes 4, Porsche 98. Christopher Haas at third in the Santa Lock Audi, the white and blue number 25. Fourth fastest, Jules Gounon. He is parked in the Bentley garage. Rick Broikers in the number 10 car. They got a bit of assistance, the other, the number five already stepped <laughs> sideways. <laughs> well, they did the right thing. Yeah. Nothing lost. But again, we're on the overall classifications of this qualifying session. There's a dearth of green appearing and there's no purple yeah. whatsoever. So again, as we saw in qualifying two, everybody has gone early. No one has taken you know, the opportunity to hang back and in the last moments of the session. Pit lane Ooh. is a lot less busy. Only about, about, say about a third of the cars are in the pit lane, the other two thirds are all out on track. But it looks to me that we've got a lockout on the front row of the grid, and nothing I can see on screen is going to change that with three or well, just under three minutes remaining. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody left with uh, bullets in the gun or tyres on the car more accurately. Lots of cars pitting. Matt Campbell has pitted, Jules Gounon's pitted, Mathieu Jaminet, Christopher Haaser. So four of our fastest, five of our fastest seven cars in the pit lane. Marco Mapelli uh, still out in 563, but whether he's got any pace left or not, hard to imagine he has. One of the disappointments in qualifying I know will be this car here. Raffaele Marcello dominated Q1, but this car currently down in provisional ninth place. Vincent April has not been able to get it up to where they would naturally believe they should rightfully be, but he's on a lap. Wait and see what Vance and Abril can do at the end of this lap. So the 88 in this session is only 24th quickest, which is not the normal pace of Vance and Abril. 
but there is time remaining. There we see the yeah. 98 Porsche team congratulating themselves. Then, Wait for Vance and Abdul. This car might pop up into, but currently is showing to be in the fifth row of the grid and ninth position. If he can find 12 thousandths of a second, that moves him up one spot. Now, to move up two spots, he actually needs to find 0.14 of a second. So let's see how close he gets. 88 comes across start finish line. Ninth combined and goes up to eight. So one he's picked up one position. Yep. So they're on the fourth row of the grid, which is a way better than being in the fifth row of the grid where it was. In fact, you know, he nearly got two. He was he's only 95 thousandths away from jumping up ahead of the Santa Lock Audi as well. So he very nearly got those two places. So Vance and still got another lap to go. There's still a minute or so on the session remaining, and the track is not emptier, but whether he's got yeah. the tire grip available, that it, you know, this set of tires, how many laps has this car done in the session so far? Uh, uh, seven. Yeah, so that's a lot of laps yeah, on a set of, of tires. So it's unlikely, it's unlikely, but not to say impossible. Give them the benefit of the doubt, as everybody now is virtually certain that the top 15 bar Marco Mapelli. Uh, are all back in the pits. 54 Porsche are winners in Monza early in the season in dreadful wet weather conditions. They will start 22nd on the combined grid. About Miguel Ramos, what can he find in the Barwell Lamborghini? This is one of the few cars still circulating. So everybody in the top 15 has now into the pit lane. Marco Mapelli didn't complete that lap, so he's in. Ramos joining Adrian Amstutz, Leo Machitsky, our AM class champions. And he comes across the line. They will start 30th on the grid. Just got across the line with, what, five seconds before the flag came out. So now it is virtually an empty racetrack. Yep. Again, it comes down to how much performance is left in your time. Is Vance on April on another quicker lap? He's just gone green in sector two. 145.8. Mapelli, so that, this is not a better lap for him. He's currently eighth quickest combined. Yeah. Marco he is Mapelli still pushing. actually didn't go into the pit lane. He's continuing with what, well, the last lap. Again, if he can find another 95 thousandths of a second, so nine hundredths of a second or one tenth, then he will move up another spot. And what is I interesting. Say, maybe not on this lap. This though. car, Marco Mapelli is on exactly the same time within one thousandth of a second of being in the front row of the grid. One wow. thousandth of a second. Wow. But he's backed out of it, you can hear. Yeah. He's coming back into the pit, so Vance and Abril didn't make any further progress. <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? So first to second, over three drivers, 54 thousandths of a second. It's the 98 Porsche team Roman Dumas, Sven Muller and Mathieu Jaminet who are on pole and Louise Beckett is with them. The 98 Porsche crew are celebrating and just double checking that you had got pole, right? Yeah, finally. I mean, uh, yeah, good qualifier. We're always uh, top five. I think a uh, good average of three drivers. Finally, a good result. We are waiting for it all the year long. So we'll be another story, the race, but uh, it was good. We had good performance on the weekend. So everything is going, it's going so far very good, so wait and see. So Sven, as uh, Roman says, it's a good start to the final race of the season. Yeah, finally we are on pole. I'm really happy. Um, yeah, at the beginning we struggled a bit, but all over the weekend we improved the car and now yesterday we had good uh, long run pace and this morning good quality shot. So let's keep the fingers crossed that we have a good race. Where are you going to finish after the three hours? I hope on the top of the podium, but uh, <laughs> Let's let's have a nice race already. You know we are we are looking for it since the start of the season, and after we will see. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, well done, Louise. Uh, Roman Duma, Sven Muller in the garage, of course, because Mathieu Jaminet uh, bringing the car back in. But the 98 Porsche, the aggregate of the three drivers, sees them on pole position by 54 thousandths and 563. The Lamborghini third place by just one thousandth off the front row, but the number four Black Falcon Mercedes starts on the front row, last year's race winners here. And for the 72 Ferrari, 
Well, Miguel Molina, Mikel Alicien and David Rigon struggle to find a hole in the traffic. The car is not half a second slower a lap across that driver lineup than the Porsche, but in the traffic, they just couldn't find what they needed. 13th place, not the safest place to start the race for our points leaders. A lot better than 23rd or 33rd or 43rd. But nevertheless, it is potentially in a danger zone. Three hours of racing, as Roman Dumas pointed out. First of all, you've got to have a good race, a clean race, a happy race, not make mistakes on track, not mistake, make mistakes in the pits, and then hope that no major dramas come your way, dealt by fate and other cars. Well, there is the rest of the grid. Our 45 car lineup is complete. Let's get down and hear from Louise Beckett with Lucas Stoltz at Black Falcon. Lucas Stoltz from the number four, um, one thousandth of a second between over three laps. That is just crazy between you and the 563. Yeah, to be honest, uh, it's insane how close it is. Uh, it was really, really tricky here with so many cars on this track, uh, especially the really slow last sector. So yeah, you have to have to manage your gap and with the new tyres, basically lap one, and after that, it's, uh, you struggle with the rear. But I, I think we all managed quite well. Uh, in the end, the average count, and uh, everybody of us did a, did a decent lap, and uh, that's where, why we are P2. There's going to be some showdown, isn't there, over the next three hours of the race? Yeah, it will be a hot uh, race in terms of temperatures, but also a hot fight. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. How tough is it? It's this tough. One second covers the fastest 21 cars over three drivers. Not one driver's shot, three drivers. Number four, Black Falcon Mercedes. Great effort by Mario Engel, Yelma Berman and Lucas Stoltz. They line up second. 563 Lamborghini lines up third. 72 Ferrari struggling down in the teens, but it's the 98 Rover Racing Porsche that will start on pole. The race gets underway at three this afternoon. <laughs>